bloke, Big Bad Mel Brown. Considering Brown only played 14 matches with Richmond, he certainly made his mark on the game, like an atom bomb. Remember the infamous Windy Hill brawl. People are laid out everywhere. One of the nastiest scenes I've seen in football for years. I don't know how that started. I was just giving you the half-time score. We're just about to close down. Did you start that or how'd that come about? Oh, that's not quite true because Jenkins fell down and we stood on him and he put his hand up and went like that. And I said, now I know why they call you Jerker. Uh, and then uh, Casson came running in and jumped with a tracksuit on on top of me and he looked like Batman. And uh, I landed on the ground and that's basically all the part that I took in that blue. But there was a few. I think I got a week suspension, Lulu. That's not, very, that. that's not very much when you consider some of the others. Poor old GR got two years, six months and two grand, and someone else got six weeks, and Stephen Parsons and uh, Ronnie Andrews. And I think Shitty was involved in that too. No, Shitty did not. See what Kevin Bartler did. He ran straight up the race, yeah. straight up the race. And when we got in, he'd drunk nearly all the squash. There wasn't 20 little glasses of squash left. He'd knocked them all off. Well, he wasn't going to be mixed up in the brawl. No, he said he was thirsty. Of course, Mal's antics weren't restricted to VFL grounds. Oh, no. The ever-affable Brownie allowed his home crowds in Western Australia to also enjoy his natural talents. Just ask Claremont supporters. We used to invite the umpires down to practice, you know, the pre-season scratch matches, and I'd uh, call him and said, listen, I don't want to... Uh, uh, you to play many free kicks because this is a very soft club and we want to try and get out of it and get the tough ball and as of, he just said I'm not losing so as I did I just clipped his heels and he did a triple somersault and uh, uh, I got reported for that in a game amongst ourselves. Uh, reported for how long? I got 12 weeks I think for that Tw in a game amongst yourselves. But did you deliberately do it or what? Well I did deliberately do it but it was uh, you know he was very rude I mean umpires should pay attention when you're paying their wages. <laughs> Now, what was one of the worst things you ever said to a player when you're on his mark, or trying to put him off for kicking for goal? Oh, look, I suppose abusing his race or creed. I mean, the thing I laugh now about when people have shots at the Aboriginals. I mean, what about the blokes we used to call dings and uh, dagos and <laughs> wogs and ponds? <laughs> I mean, all that was accepted as. But I always thought, well, shit, they always called me a fat bastard. Why, why should I have to put up with that? Well, were you a fat bastard? <laughs> At times. But this piece of showmanship really has to take the cake. A poor innocent Perth reporter simply doing his job. But not only did the journo father return to work without the interview, he was minus a microphone as well. Well, Lou, it was a reserves match, uh, which Polly Farmer's two sons, Dean and uh, Brett Farmer, got reported. And it was against West Perth, and uh, uh, the, the game got completely out of control. And we made a calculated decision and went and, and stopped the match. And we walked out there and uh, it proved pretty right because there was quite a few reports out of it. And there was even an incident at the tribunal the Thursday after involving one of the players and the umpire. So we went out and took them off the ground. And then, at, as I'm talking in the league game at quarter time, uh, a reporter from uh, Channel 7, I think, in Perth walked out in the middle of the huddle while you're talking and pushed a microphone and started asking questions. So what happened was as he did that, I just grabbed hold of the microphone and tore it off the um, off the lead, I suppose, once and say the cable. And then as I walked back in, I threw it in the bin. And on the Monday, this lovely old lady who, if they ring up and give their name, I took the call, rang up and she said, Malcolm, all I can say, how rude that reporter was, how lack of respect he had, but under all that pressure, you still looked after the Keep Australia Beautiful campaign and you threw it in the rubbish bin. <laughs> Brown has returned to Punt Road as Richmond's marketing officer. It's a job he's taken to like a duck to water. Hey, hang on. Hold it right there. A duck to water? Now, doesn't that bring back a story or two from another Richmond larrikin? His name, Brian Roberts, better known as The Whale. The Whale played in both West and South Australia